This week, a powerful new advertising campaign for Coca-Cola that tackles the global problem of obesity. Also, how a breakfast cereal goes high-tech and a cheeky campaign for Ford that upsets a nation. We'll also interrogate four brand truths relevant to South African marketers. A very warm welcome to Mags on Media. Well, all of that's to come, but we start this week with the new adventures of an old ad man. After three years away from the advertising industry, former TBWA chief executive Muzi Kuzwayo is now building for the black market what he calls the Motown of South Africa's communications industry. He's got a new agency called Ignitive. Let's get the lowdown. Welcome. Good to see you again. Been a couple of years since we last spoke. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's been three years. Beard's got a bit grayer, I see. Oh, yes. But you've got Ta lots more wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> you say this, South Africa's, um, or most South African advertising agencies struggle to understand the evolving black consumer market and develop messages, you say, that are not relevant. Surely in 2013 we've moved beyond this debate. I hope so. But when I came back into the industry, I've, I just realized how the industry hasn't changed, largely from the way the agency composition still is. I attended the advertising awards of last week, and only one black person, black mm. person went up the stage. And so those insights that are supposed to be natural are still not there. And I think a lot of the advertising that I see still is mm. pretty patronizing. So we're hoping to do what uh, Barry Gordy did with Motown, and mm. created Motown and made black people get into rhythm and blues and what, really enjoy it. What's the reason here? Is it reluctance? Mm -hmm. Is it a lack of skills in the industry? Yeah. Or is it simply advertising is not a particularly attractive career option? I think it's reluctance. It's a reluctance on the side of, of managers. Um, because people, if they, if they are attracted into an agency and they come into an agency, a lot of them leave. They leave because they're not being treated well. Um, Recently, when I got back, I met somebody who had done very well in an ad agency. They'd done ex exceptionally well. And I couldn't believe it was a big company, a big agency, and a big CEO, why they would let them leave as a result of lost some big clients as a result of that. So I think it's reluctance on my, you know, the way I see it. How do you fix it? You fix it by creating Motown, mm -hmm. by creating <laughs> uh, a strong competition. So what are you going to um, do differently then? At Ignite, what we're going to be doing is we're going to, we're attracting the right people. We're training them. And we're attracting people who want to make a difference, who want to, uh, sounds cliched, who want to, m to prove a point that black people can do it too. Uh, Mr. Vessels did it with Toyota when he brought it into South Africa, that Afrikaners could do it in South Africa against the English. And you look back a few years later, he did it very well. And I, I think it's our time to do that. Mm. You're really throwing the gauntlet down to the traditional agencies. And they're not necessarily going to like what you say. No, they won't. Mm. But that's what competition is about, isn't mm. it? Uh, I've been in the big arena. We've played there. Uh, and I think we, 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 we're getting the right people to be able to, be able to take them on. And I, I'm making this promise that in five years' time, I'll be coming here to tell you that our agency, Ignitive, is the largest agency in the country and the best mm. in the world. I want to go back to something that you said. Um, you, you said that in the current agency structure, yeah. uh, agencies are not providing relevant messages. In what way do you think messages are failing the brand? You know, there's a formula that I have seen on television of how to do an ad for black people. You get a black woman who's largely probably overweight, who's going to be dancing, whether it's to a cockroach or something, but she's going to dance and scream and shout and do the silliest of things, mm. and they think it's funny. Mm. Now, South Africans have got the most amazing sense of humor, which is why we're able to go through apartheid. But you don't see any of that coming, mm. up, coming through. All you see is, is an incredibly patronizing advertising that makes you cringe. Mm. And that's what we seek to change um, by doing something that people will like and that will be creative and be recognized around the world. I, I don't want to dismiss what you say, but yeah. your, your, your successor at TBWA told me, in fact, and it, it leads on from what you're saying, he said that brands have got to understand that when a black person buys a product and is happy with the product, they don't automatically burst into song. And that, I, think that, I think that's exactly <laughs> what you're exactly saying. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I used to run a retail store, two retail stores. I never saw people bursting, yeah. bursting into songs when taking products yeah. off the shelves. Yeah. You know, there's a certain dignity and self-respect that I would like to put into advertising in South Africa. So what you're also saying, Wizzy, because why is that brands themselves need a swift kick in the pants? Um, how do they need to change their thinking? 
Um, firstly, by getting people who are, who, who, are, who are brave enough to tell the agency that this is not right. In mm -hmm. fact, that's why I think a lot, of advertise, a lot of clients are losing faith in advertising. Because what they see and what they're being given all the time, the two are very different. Um, so it's when, 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 strong, when new brands come and they kick the pants off mm -hmm. the backside of these, these big brands, that we'll start to see the, di the, ch the change. But often there's so much juniorization within the marketing sphere that they don't have the courage, the wisdom, the wherewithal, the skill, the ability, call it what you want, to actually fight their agency. Because the agency itself has become the repository of that knowledge. No, the agency can never be the repository of the knowledge. Um, it, things change so much. They've got other clients mm -hmm. to, to care about. So I think on the client side, they've got to find the right people. And there's been a problem with marketing. Obviously, if if we don't give good solutions to clients, clients will lose faith. And that's where the problem has been. So what we're hoping to do is to make clients believe in the advertising process again, believe in the marketing process. Because if they do, they will make sure that they get the best people on, the, on that side of the business, on, on, on that side of, 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 the, of, of the business. And, and that's where we, we, we come in as well. You have a big challenge ahead of you. You might disagree or agree with me on this particular issue, but traditional black agencies, if we're mm. going to use that term, have been given government and parastatal business and yeah. nothing else. Your challenge, if you're, if you're creating this, this, this Motown yes. uh, concept, is to break that paradigm. Absolutely. Are you going to do that? Are brands actually going to trust you to do that? Yeah, well, two things are happening. Are happening. On the marketing side, we're starting to see black people. We've, we, we did the stats. Out of 20 presentations that we had, right, 29 people, senior, black, uh, this is private companies, 29 were all black, were black. And there were about three or four white people. When I first started in the, in the advertising business, the major, I would be the only black person in the room. Now the three or four white people that were in the room were actually reporting into the black marketing directors or CEOs or that kind of thing. So the landscape in the country has changed and um, we're going we're gonna to ride that wave. So I think in a few years' time, what we'll be seeing is... In that change and in fact the clients that we've worked on are all private mm -hmm. clients so there's a there's a big change and i think the biggest problem that we also we've also seen is that or which is an advantage to us is that clients say that the agencies haven't changed and they don't understand them most of the business that we've had is has been cold calls mm -hmm. clients calling us as opposed to the other way all right, final question for you a lot of what you've said is contained in this very thought-provoking but uncomfortable read called yes. uh, black man's uh, medicine essentially you imply that black people won't do anything right unless there is a white man around that that's difficult particularly as a, as yeah. a whitey to swallow it's it's yeah. a saying i didn't invent the saying yeah. it's an idiom it's a Sesotho idiom um, and in fact, somebody said when I told them over the book that, well, you can see the trenches in Joburg mm -hmm. have not been dug, have not been covered because there's no white man to stand there and <laughs> make sure the blacks <laughs> are covering them. But I'm hoping to change that. Yeah. I'm hoping to make people believe in themselves so that they can change that. In a few years' time, hopefully, that'll be just an old thing that doesn't yeah. make any sense. You do realize all of this is going to create much debate on our Facebook page. Muzi Kuzwai, always good uh, talking to you. Welcome back to the advertising yes. industry. Thank you. Coming Thank you. up on Mags on Media, how 3D pavement art is helping sell a leading car brand.